<laughs> what, what what Kristen said just before I started is that Aladdin was actually a thief. And yeah. he should be thusly punished. He was actually apparently the only thief in Agrabah because everyone just knew his name and knew exactly Everybody who he was. But else didn't have any goddamn hands getting chopped off all the time. Also, no one decided to take care of him. And you know what's funny is that because that's a, a Middle Eastern society is that there's that in the Quran it actually says you have to give up a certain amount of money to the poor. So I'm actually kind of surprised. I know it's a I Disney don't story. Buy that. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> if only they look closer. Do would they, they see a Disney movie? Would they see a. Uh, what is it called? The thing? Oh, a Christoph key thong. Key thong. <laughs> would they see a key thong? No, serene. I didn't know what you were referring to. That was completely. The, uh, this is from TB Jeremiah. Tuberculosis Jeremiah. Tuberculosis Jeremiah. <laughs> um. Who says they've been listening to Refrigerate for a while and enjoyed hugely. Also, thank you all's art. All right. Like both of y'all's art, not to thank you all's art. Uh, <laughs> thank you for doing this. Entertaining form in a mini fridge. Uh, there's not much of a story behind this except that I... Oh, uh, never mind. I jumped too far ahead. Many of this episode, I got up the courage to send you something. I'm offering up for slaughter or gouache painting I did back in 2008, which is right before I bailed on learning that there's... I'm actually trying to paint in order to focus on my non-related art degree. There's not much of a story behind this, except that I learned that there's a heraldic kind of griffin, but with spikes instead of wings called a keythong, and from that started speculating about how a keythong would probably be super jealous of griffins and want to fly in the way he could, in any way he could. Um, he says he... <laughs> no! No! So his look- story's close to my heart! She's got a lot of spokes and a lot of balloons. <laughs> um... I vividly remember that I put a lot of work into this, which is depressing to think about. I was ridiculously proud of it, and now I'm just embarrassed. So don't hold back on a well-deserved derision. Yeah, derision. Uh, it would be super cathartic. Although I'd also really appreciate if you could share everything. Share. Sorry, my eyes got blurry. Share anything you've got for someone who wants to go back and actually learn how to paint traditional or digital and use color effectively. So we got to keep that in mind. Oh, yeah, because uh, it's gouache. Gouache. No, yep. that he wants to learn how to use color effectively. Oh, Because it's okay. been years since, and I feel, and I, it's years since I tried, and I feel at this point I don't even know where to start. It's kind of intimidating. So I'm going to keep this over here as we look at this. So I that we don't keep the, buy that. Well, anyway, <laughs> so this is mini fridge. Uh, we, yep. It's a different mini fridge. We just yep. recorded another one because we're doing a batch of them. Sure are. Um, but, so this is mini fridge. Uh, I'm Andrew Radick. And I'm Kristen Plesko. And uh, this is Tuberculosis Jeremiah. <laughs> <laughs> Just whenever I see the, the TB, that's always what I think of. Like, oh, That's what the shot is for. Yep. Old TB. Old TB skin test. <clears throat> so we have this this image of uh, Keithongs. Yep. Andrea Keithong, looks at me thong, whenever thong. she says Keithong, because she's like, Kristen, that's, that's your persona. That's what you are. That's actually not what I do. Kristen just told me that this is her fursona now. Oh, well, she didn't... Uh, before, oh, after yeah. she was a betta fish dragon for a while. Well, it was it was too hard to do that. And I was like, well, she's basically just a griffin with horns anyway. She's basically just a keythong. Take off her wings. She's a keythong. Problem solved. So... And just uh, shaking her head, but it, it's a damn fantasy animal. Like, what do you want? I'm not... I just... <laughs> I'm not shaking my head at a keythong. I'm shaking my head that you draw all these references where it has big wings and stuff, and then you make it look like a bird and a dragon and a and a griffin, and it has you know a betta fish tail and stuff. And then it's just like you know what, just this other thing with horns. It's whatever you can do whatever the fuck you want with your your persona. It's just well, it doesn't it doesn't matter? She still has the same look. It just doesn't it doesn't seem to really matter that much. If you have a reference, you could literally say it's a dog, and then people will still draw it like you know. I mean, that's the reference. She's a dog bird. I don't know. I don't know what we're talking about. But anyway. I don't know either. So. So, uh, yeah, we have tuberculosis Jones here. Jeremiah. Sorry, tuberculosis Jeremiah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we have this this image of a keythong sort of flying, uh, done in gouache, which Kristen's done a bit of gouache. I've done also done a little bit of gouache. More of a gouache and watercolor. Gouache. Um, gouache. But, Yeah. So, uh, what are your thoughts initially on this? Uh, well, first off, I, it, it, to me it looks a lot like a, like a coloring book that has been colored. Like the lines and stuff, and I know that is a style that a lot of people like, is uh, like line art and stuff. Um, 
but if, to me, it's difficult to do things like depth effectively. You know, because if you look yeah. at like the if you look at like the like the river, like basically the river that's like. <laughs> two miles away, kind of, or a mile away in, in the river that's, like, pretty much right below where you are, like, the line's the th- same thickness there. So, to me, it doesn't work as effectively as, like, a... So we're mostly talking about line variation. That's yeah. That's what it is. Well, is that farther away stuff, or more out-of-focus stuff, should have very, very, very thin lines, if if not yeah, no lines. Yeah, I would honestly just... Uh, and the stuff closer to you... <laughs> yeah, that too. Uh, stuff closer to you would have much bigger lines, or yeah. bigger lines. If, if you like that sort if of thing. If you're doing a sort yeah. of line thing, it's called line variation. And uh, it can be a very effective way of showing volume. And yeah. it's less effective at showing distance. Uh, definitely volume, but not so much distance. I mean, unless you go really varied and you have, like, big fucking thick black lines up front and then really tiny lines far in the distance... Otherwise, if you're playing with just a, a just a slight variation, it's not going to be effective. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I agree with you that like the the ones in the the mountains in the distance have the same sort of lines as the river up close, and it flattens it. Yeah, it's um, very flat. Um, I honestly think I think the the color in this image is really not that bad. I think um, sort of atmospheric perspective could be used a little more effectively, especially for being really high up in the air where a river is that small. Mm-hmm. Um, like because just, right now there's, yeah. like, a, a darkness directly underneath him, and that makes him look like he's right on the ground. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's probably the, the biggest thing. Like, if you took that sort of lightness and you colored in that whole shadow area, which I understand is supposed to be a shadow of the balloon, but uh, if you colored in, like, that bright green area underneath the rest of it... supposed to be the shadow of the... What do you mean, like... Just that this is oh, in shadow Oh, 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 that... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Just the basket and the character There wasn't the any contrast, like... I think that's that's part of the problem, like, with the... No, no, I'm just saying, it's like, there's a shadow here on this ground directly underneath this balloon. And it makes it look like the balloon is on the ground. Yeah, it kind of does. I I was wondering what that was, like, if that was just kind of, like, a mistake or, like, a, you know, just a dark patch of ground, so... I think it was, it was supposed to be, like, some shadow and maybe it was, like, a, like, a forest or something that wasn't really filled in. Yeah. But, I mean, it is gouache. Gouache is opaque, so it's it would be uh, easy to sort of go in. But, yeah, if it was sort of that, that brighter color, it would instantly lift it a lot more off the ground, make it a lot more um, yeah. uh, useful, I guess. And the and the one thing with gouache that, that I really like when people do this with gouache is that you don't have to just choose black lines for gouache. You can literally take the paint, and a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll actually add the lines in last or, or very, you know, or not, like, the first thing they do. Mm-hmm. And uh, they'll have, like, you know, a dark red for a red or something. Or, or like, you know, blue, like a dark blue outline for the blue or different kind of green lines for green. And, and it's really nice. And, and it, it basically, it, it does uh, unify the image quite a bit without just having stark black lines. Also, the, the roads are very black. Like, they, they, yeah. asphalt, is, uh, asphalt is not uh, <coughs> that black unless it is, like... That is, like, the richest... Just paved it, <laughs> yeah. and also there, the it is the clearest environment that you've ever been in. Yeah, it, it'll tend to go to blue, like a sort of gray-blue. Like gray, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just for distance-wise. But yeah, it, it'll... Asphalt especially just sort of goes white, or like a light gray. Yeah. Like, like if you look at Florida roads, that's basically what I think of. Hmm. Especially for, like, a rustic uh, country. Like, I would imagine that they would be pretty grayed out, pretty uh, gray-muzzled for the, you know, the asphalt. Gray-muzzled. I don't know, gray, grayed out. Um. But, uh, also, does that, like, river just, did they build, like, a road right over a river? Right over a meandering river? It actually looks like there's a pond, but then there, I think the river itself is very distracting. Yeah, that's not really how a river. I don't really like how it looks then there. If that was gone... Nothing would be lost, really, in this image. Like, yeah, if you... It, it, the thing I have a And see, this might just be the, you know, uh, just me nitpicking about general how geology works, is that rivers form in a very particular way, and this would be a very old river. However, rivers move, like, a lot. Like, like the, the, the meanderings, there'd be oxbow lakes nearby, and there'd be no way you would really be able to have a farm that close without just completely, like... Oh, yeah. No, those your... people have built their farm yeah. on a terrible place. Yeah. I mean, if you were, like, in ancient Egypt and you used, like, different farming techniques, like, that being near a river would be fine, but it would be, like, in a floodplain. Like, if you look, like, basically rivers, like, you know, basically in the bend part, 
you know, in the very outside of the bend, it would have like a deposit of sand. And then it would be, you know, it, if you look at a river, there's a very particular way they go. Yeah. And, and, and I guess to me that, that bothers me just because it's, it's a, and that's just like a small detail that I would like to see in paintings whenever I see them. Like just small details like that. I do that like how just, this pond has its own fence though. That's a very ritzy, uh. It's a very ritzy pond. <laughs> So like, and they just build a fence post just over the riverboard. <laughs> yeah. um, it's like a... I, I think a yeah. lot of what sort of throws me off on this picture is that you can tell these are supposed to be sort of rolling hills. Mm-hmm. But then, like, some of the perspective on the farms are off. Like, this this darkened one here, it sort of, like, narrows down. And then, like, it, it's not effectively showing the land by the colors or anything on mm-hmm. it. It's, it's trying to use it from the fence post, and that's not really enough context for people yeah. to tell that's supposed to be sort of rolling hills, you know, and so it, it ends up looking like just sort of off perspective. Um, yeah, I, I sort of agree with the, I think with the, the river, it's sort of looking at something that's really, really far away, mm. like a really, really big river from really far away. Yeah. Um, when this is like up in the air, a couple thousand feet maybe, you know, and you wouldn't see like, wow, just like the, would, the wiggliest you would river. You see the reflection of the sun on it, honestly, so it would be a lot lighter. Um, be, you know, just because it, it would just basically reflect the sky right, right on top of it. So yeah. instead of being like, you know, parts of it would be very dark that are in the shade, like almost, I mean, some rivers that are very deep are almost black. And then you'd have like the reflection, the very bright reflection. So parts of it will also, so if you look at a satellite photo or a tall, like a picture of the Hudson or something like from an airplane, like that's what it looks like. It basically, there's like, it, it's, it's very contrasty, but it, it usually reflects like the sky. Right. It, it just, so. well, I mean, it is reflecting blue, but it's not. It, it looks a lot darker to me. Like, it does look bottom. darker. Honestly, I would just get rid of the river. Yeah, honestly. Pond is getting... fine, you know. Yeah. River is unnecessary. River creates a lot of like visual disruption in the piece. Yeah. Uh, and you can create that sort of serene, because I, I assume he's going for a very serene you know, mm-hmm. like a, a surveying thing, like, wow, look at this, and then it's just like, you know, it's got like a big squiggly ass river <laughs> and good, stuff in it that... It's good noise for it. It's it's like if you had like a nice painting in the Mona Lisa, and then you just put like a, like somebody's like intestine track, just like a big squiggly ass intestine track on it, like... That's why her sweet smile. Visual edge? <laughs> I mean, it, like, it She's just... actually... It doesn't really it. feel like it belongs in this picture. Yeah. Um, and if you want, like, if you really have to have a body of water, a lake would do fine. Yeah. Or like an oxbow lake is a little bit more interesting shape. Uh, and that's a part of an old river. Golly. I'm going to be really weird about it like I am. <laughs> um, I think the other thing is, like, especially if this is sort of a, an up in the air, and, and I would would have spent more time on the, the clouds. Because right now they're they're just sort of, like, it looks like there's some sort of, like, polluting thing in the like distance. It's like a nuclear blast in the distance, and it's just, like, the, the very end of the mushroom cloud. Just, like, right yeah. behind it, and it's like... Yeah, and and just... there's a lot of really interesting clouds that you can use. They literally come in most shapes and sizes, and, you know... The bottoms look, usually are flat, yeah. and, and the tops are puffy to a certain extent. And you can even do light. things like like cirrus. Like, are those the wispy ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like real okay. wispy clouds, real high up ones. Something to create more visual interest in that, because it, it feels unfinished. It feels like yeah. an underpainting. Where's, and of course, where's God's promise that he's never going to flood the earth again? The yeah, rainbow. If you could just get a big rainbow Jesus and then Christ. a sun with some sunglasses <laughs> on. It's yeah. my favorite type of sun. How do happy. I know he's never going to flood the earth again? He's always in the corner of that sun. <laughs> Yeah, we we do need a sun with some sunglasses because that's just fucking outrageous that you don't have that. Also, is there like a shield in the distance? Like, what is that? On I the think top it's of like a water tower. Are you sure? No, <laughs> I didn't make it. this. I don't know. Zoom in, enhance. It looks like part of a city, and like, like to a... me, it looks like a giant robot coming for him. I think that's a giant robot. It's coming not for him. a giant robot. It's a water tower. It's a fucking it's not water tower. What a tower. fucking water tower looks like. You want me to show you? Yeah, that's not what a water tower looks like. I, I, my grandpa lives right next to a water tower. <laughs> oh, they have hats too. <laughs> Is that what they look like? Yeah, most water towers I've seen look like this, or not yeah, like they that. look like, like a little like UFO. Like this, or they made those <coughs> hats on them. Excuse me. No, that's what they look like. They have little hats. Uh, no, but look at it again. That's not what that looks like. This is the one. The one by me looks just like this. Like what the hell? I've never seen one like that. Yeah, yeah it's usually just a water tower. Here, look. 
Here. Look at the side by side. No, but look at look because it's on one leg. You know, it looks like it's like coming for you. Like it literally has like a head, and it's like a big beefy like robot. Water hour. Rouse dower. <laughs> Rouse dower. Oh, they have like little beep boops on there too? Sometimes, yeah. Oh, well, apparently I'm an idiot and I don't know what water yeah, towers look the like. There's the one in Rosemont looks like. It's just a big giant Yeah, it looks like rose. a maraca. It does look like a maraca. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what I'm used to with a water tower is like a giant maraca, not like a little thing with a hat and a little that's doobly. Cute. That's actually really cute, yeah. We saw a water tower and it just had a very cute smiley face on it. There's Mount Prospect. That's like, terrifying. They, like, is that just what happens in the Midwest? You have terrifying monuments to, to our hubris that can also contain water? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's actually it's terrifying. It's just the water tower. I no, mean, I've never lived in, around one. Like, every place I've ever that's lived. That's why you think it's some sort of robot. To me, it and looks only like... has one leg. Look at it, Andrew. To me, it's it looks one like, leg. To me, it looks like or the it's a giant water tower. for us. That is a huge water tower. Like, they normally are. Look at how big this like is. Like, the, the mountains with it... Like, no. Okay, yeah, give it mountains. That is yeah, a no, massive water mountains. tower. That's like literally, that's why I thought it was a giant, like, iron giant coming for us. It's not the iron giant. <laughs> There's Addison's. That's really fuck. I'm, like, that is my secret field. By the way, if you guys ever want to, like, if, if you, if you know. If you have some sort of ulterior motive, if you yeah. really want to freak Kristen out, water towers for some reason. No, push me into a water tower. That'll really freak that me out. That is incredibly <laughs> difficult to do. I am They're terrified just, of like, trains. An open- and, and, like, I'm just worried that it's just a giant pit of water and then there's drains because I've heard of people drowning in those and that's, like, one of my ah, secret so fears. Like, They're disgusting. They're a monument to our hubris and I hate how there's water on top. Why is it there? Why aren't they... Why is it there? pressure. It makes a lot of sense, but it still makes me upset. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm just... See, that's actually our water towers. They're just... They just uh, all look like God, that. Just They're big nubs. That. I know, it's just, on top. it's it's gross, because, like, if I fall it's in there, I'm going to drown, I'm going to go into the pipes, and I'm going to be dead. Go into a and then people tower. are going to drink my, my disgusting, rotted body. That's disgusting. I don't like that this. That is disgusting, <laughs> and that's not what happens in a fucking water tower. It's not just an open pot of water. All the animals and shit can just go in there. Well, what is it? What does it look like? See, I'm so... I'm pointing to you. To a to water me, tower. I just imagine it's I can't like a gourd full of water. Well, what does it look like on the inside? How do I know I'm not going to fall into it? Anyway, it's like to me, it looks feet in the air. You can climb. They have ladders. I mean, how are you going to accidentally climb? I had, I had. Well, before I started my anti-anxiety medicine, you like see ladders, and you're like, I'm, I, I feel a compulsion to climb up there. I don't want to climb up there, but I feel a compulsion. I can't stop thinking about it, and then I have to go in the tower. Like I, I that. I hate those, okay? And you guys are going to think I am fucking crazy, but I really can't stand drains or water towers. It's just a water tower, It's though. gross. It provides pressure, so your faucet works. Live in a place with mountains. <laughs> we also have a water tower here. Where? Downtown. I've never seen it. <laughs> I can't I can't be outraged any more <laughs> than I am. Like, I, I hit a wall. I hit a goddamn wall. Yes, weird. I can't explain to you water towers anymore. It's Weird. a fucking water tower. It's a monument to our hubris. <sighs> okay, well, that's a really big water tower for the distance. Okay. It's a big water tower. I think the other thing is that this, this balloon just looks like a water balloon. <laughs> just, like, blowing up. <laughs> it like, does. I would actually, like, look at, at legit um, hot air balloons. They're, they're shaped quite a bit different. It, it literally just looks like a big water balloon. This yeah, balloon. also, they're usually different shapes, and, like, the cords and stuff actually hold in, like, rectangles. I guess, like, the cords... Like, they have, like, little, like, you know when you look at a kite and stuff, like, the rectangles have, like, a certain volume to them, mm-hmm. because the, you know, just because, because the ropes holding it down, you know, would press into it a little bit, so you'd have, like, shapes and shadows and stuff on it, and I'm sad that there's no shapes and shadows in it. I also think it's sort of missing the, the key components, you know, the little flame burner thing, and it's got all these little... I could be inside. Doobly. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, it has the sandbags. It does have sandbags. Um, let's zoom in on the character. Wah. There we go. He has a lot of spikes on him. Look, Kristen, he's like you. Wow. <laughs> oh, um, golly. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty on par and stuff with the rest of... I think maybe something uh, for next time, especially if this person is looking to get back into digital painting. Mm-hmm. Um, if this water... If this... <coughs> I'm sorry, that was a sneeze, that wasn't... I know. Okay. I'm, I'm just going, ouch, because it's just like... 
I'm sorry there wasn't anything I could do. Um, for the future, I would just suggest, especially when this is your main focus, is to spend like more time on details. Because the details are... They're pretty much about the same throughout. There's a little bit more details and stuff on here, but not enough to really have it stand out. Yeah. And... Like, you can really make things stand out quite a bit just mm-hmm. by detailing them a little bit more. So this griffin, like, I mean, his anatomy, from what we can see, is, is fairly decent. He's sort of blobby. Like, you can't really... He has a fairly short neck, I guess. There really isn't much anatomy to judge because he is hidden. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, that, that's like a, you know... I mean, you know, and the thing is, is, like, now that we're looking closer, like, it, it, the coloring is a little sloppy. Like, the, uh, you know, like, the edges and stuff. Like, if you're going to have line art, you have to be really careful to make sure it is, like, exactly in the lines. Otherwise, it's just yeah unpleasant. And, and like, that balloon, there is, like, there is red coming from every which way. So, you know, so I'd, I'd be... Balloon is not having a good time. Yeah. He's been stabbed a little bit. Yeah. Not too but, badly stabbed. You know, and, like, the muddy area on the bottom, it looks like you chose a color, like, right below the balloon. Like, it, it looks like you chose a color, and then you kept not using, a, like, an opaque gouache. You, you watered it down too much. Yeah, it does sort of just, have, like, lines or, like, a, a space around it. So I think that mushy thing when the pigment gets pushed around, and you can you can see it. You can, yeah. you can see it when it does that. And I know, you know, it really depends on what... To me, this looks like a watercolor and not, like, a gouache painting. You know, gouache, yeah, it looks like, like a sort of wash, watered-down gouache, honestly. Uh, there's not many places that there's opaque paint, though. If, yeah, I mean, if if I were you, I would, like, I think the perspective on the balloon is perfectly fine. Like, the that looks fine. Looks right. Mm-hmm. Looks good. Yeah, it's looks a square. square. <laughs> um, but, like, if you were to sort of bring your focus, like, in this, this, this four-leading uh, corner, I guess, if you were to make that, like, lighter a little bit, like, maybe you could see part of the like sunshine or something on the side of it, that would also help pop out. But definitely, definitely a sort of a, um, a focusing yeah. on especially this basket and this character would really make this piece stand out quite a bit more. Yeah, and if you wanted to use gouache, I mean, I think the best way to use it is to start with your midtones. Uh, that way you can cover up a lot of the white. And wh- one thing I don't like about this piece um, is that there's a lot of white showing through. Yeah. Um, you like know, on the and, bends of the river. Yeah, to me that's to me that's really lazy. Like whenever I see a watercolor, and that's one reason I just don't do watercolor and I, I like gouache a little bit more. And I know they're basically the same thing, only slightly more or less transparent or opaque, but mm. you know, it, it it depends on the look you want to go for. Some people do like the, the watercolor look where it looks like kinda like, you know, really quickly layered in and stuff, and it does take a skillful hand to do that and it's not easy. Um however you know, with gouache and stuff, I, I think it's important to start from, like, a mid-tone and then work your way there to get some deeper shadows and, and lighter lights. Mm. Um, especially with, like, the foreground character. If you started darker, it'd be a lot easier to pull out the highlights you wanted. I yeah, mean, I mean, and gouache has that benefit of being opaque. Yeah. So. Like, yeah, you can start in watercolor and then just and just gradually build it up. It's, you know, they're all water-soluble. True that. They all float, you know. Uh, I think it's been a while. Uh, do we have anything? Well, no. He did answer the or ask the question. Um, share anything you've got for someone who wants to go back and actually learn how to paint because it's been years since I tried and feel like it. He doesn't know where to start. Oh, so I mean, I think he has a good basis, honestly. Yeah, um, the you know, like, thing this to piece do. is not awful. I don't think it's awful. I think the colors are bright. I think you know it. It has a good mm-hmm. sort of happy feeling to it and stuff and. Um, I think with just a few, a few like getting rid of that shadow underneath the thing and stuff, like it would pop it out a lot more, and then that would, you know, make that even better. But um, yeah, I think he has a good basis. I would just um, anatomy studies are always a good way, especially if you're sort of out of the game, like painting and 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 relaxing about it, and just sort of seeing where you're at. You know, if you haven't done it for a while and everything, you want to get back into it. Doing studies is always good. Yeah, honestly, um, if you want doing like a study of a farmland or something in gouache, it, it depends on what you want to use it for. But doing something like that first can also give it's you a better idea. Traditional or digital, as or well. digital. Yeah, for me personally, I find traditional more daunting, like to get started on. Yeah, and and basically, what I what I do to get started is I you know I have something fun on that I'm like watching or listening to, and then I will get all my paints out. 
you know, clear off a nice space and I'll have, I'll have my space with, you know, my computer's on, it's playing the movie, but I have relatively few distractions on my desk. And to me, that's how I, how I do it. Like I have my paints available. It's comfortable to get things. I'm well fed. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, probably the same with digital. The same thing with everything is it's just practice, practice, practice. And nobody likes to hear the practice is the way that you get better. Um, but if you haven't done it for a while, just sort of hop back into it, like Mm -hmm. planning and, oh, maybe I should do the, like, honestly, just getting started and just doing it is going to be your, your biggest attribute. And, um, I think if this is your basis, you're, you're not too bad. Like you're, you're fairly doing fairly well as it is. Like he has good composition. I said the composition of this is good. It shows the, the environment and it shows the, you know, what's going on inside of the, inside of the little basket and the character and yeah. you get an idea of what's going on. It's yeah. not like, like a fucking train wreck where you can't tell anything of what's going on. And then for some reason you feel the need to put like, you know, spikes coming out of people's eyes. Like you're, you're not off base at all. You're, you're in a good place, I would say. And who hurt you, Andrea? Who, who put spikes in eyes? And the man with the spikes. There's six spikes in his eyes. Um, no, I, I honestly think there's a pretty decent basis here. Um, and it's going to be, I would say if you like painting big pastoral landscapes like this, then just doing some studies and yeah. uh, work whatever, whatever method you're comfortable with. And Watercolor then, and gouache can go outside. You can literally draw like a plant you really like outside, yeah. and then that maybe that's your uh, you know your one a day. You know, just go outside with a few gouache. You don't need that many colors. To just if you like, but draw it from life. I would yeah. say to from life is the best. Yeah, I mean you and can then, draw from from imagination, but from life is and then, best. And for photos, are I guess a second best. Yeah, you know, but you have to be be aware that there are distortions in photos that. Um, you know, like perspective and stuff, because the camera has one eye and we have two. Right. Yeah. So, so in terms of you know, it's good for capturing some information, but some information you can only capture with two eyes, unless you take it with a three D camera somehow. I mean, I mean, I guess you could technically do that. I guess you could. I mean, um, so do that. Take pictures with three D cameras. There you go. Take your three DS outside. Is there really <laughs> shitty software that they have? Take your uh, Virtual Boy out and uh... Jesus, yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't think they're too far off. It's just going to be practice, do some studies, see where you're at, and... Try different techniques. Yeah, uh, do different yeah. techniques. You know, honestly, like, I always found oil to be easier to paint with. I feel the... Do so, you feel the colors used effectively here? Uh, like, to me, it's... It, 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 it The colors are bright, and I don't think they're used incorrectly. It's just a little boring. Like, there, there's not there's not really any mystery to it. Like, the grass is green... The sky is blue. The, yeah. The balloon is Maybe red. Maybe some color variation and yeah. stuff will will keep it from being too boring. Yeah. Like, say. a lot of grass and stuff is yellow. I mean, yeah. or brown. I mean, and you can make it... Uh, the sky doesn't necessarily have to be blue. Um, the balloon doesn't necessarily... I mean, you know, it's just things like that. Like, it's Yeah, just, some reflected color and stuff you know, in the balloon can be blue, because it's obviously in the sky, and if it depends on what sort of shining or opacity and stuff yeah. it has. And also, if it has, like, you know... Yeah, if it, if it had some reflections in it, you know, the balloon had some slight, you know, blue to it, depending on the fabric it was, it might be a little shinier, a little, reflecting a little bit of that blue light or green. Yeah, I mean, if you want to use color effectively, I, there's some variation with the brown and the and the, the stuff in the fields and different with the, the grass and the forests, but you can use a bits of either one of those, those colors to certain parts of it to be a yeah. much more, you know, a much more... Um, I'm going to say effective again, but, like, a much more convincing yeah. and, pastoral you know, landscape. And, and, of course, like, you can look at different pastoral landscapes. Like, there, you know, Japan in the spring has a lot of different trees. Like, Holland yeah. has the, the rows and rows, you know, of, of flowers, you know, that stretch on forever. Um, mm. I've been to a flower farm in California, and it was really awesome. It was basically flowers as far as you could see. So a half hour. Okay. So, yeah. So, so yeah. No, I think just, that yeah. that's essentially... Well, thank you, Tuberculosis Jackson. <laughs> it's Tuberculosis Jones. Tuberculosis Jeremiah. I'm never going to get this right. Um, thank you for your, your submission and stuff. And if you guys want to submit to us, we're at fridgeartpodcast at gmail.com. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. You got anything else for this? Be brave. Choose colors <laughs> that are weird. Yeah. I mean, especially if you have a, if you have a career where you're financially stable and... I mean, yeah. you could take as much fucking time as you want. 
learn yeah. how to paint and stuff again. You could paint one one drawing for like a year. I mean, technically, but don't do that. Uh, do a lot, a lot of little ones. It's it's better to yeah. do a lot of little ones than one big one because just just trust me. Yeah, you're, you're you, going you just to want to get m- multiple multiple yeah. things in practice. Though, yeah, so. doing doing ten speed paintings that are thirty minutes each is way better than doing a five hour painting. You're you're gonna learn way more. Yes, indeed. Okay, I think we're uh, good for today. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Yeah, and. I've been Andrea Radek. And I guess I've been Kristen Plesko. For this half hour. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye, guys. See you later.